So now our model is set up where we read uh, real orders. Uh, we're not doing random arrivals. And we support this notion of work and process where we can start the system not empty and idle. In this case, we're starting with four jobs uh, that are already uh, in the middle of being processed. And so the last thing we need to do to set the system up to use with RPS is to turn on resource logging. So I select my four workstations go to the advanced option and make sure that resource logging is set to true. And then I do the same thing with my operator object. I want to make sure that I record uh, logging for the operator also. And so that, now the system runs as it did before and we're actually logging the information. To access the RPS functionality uh, from our facility view we're going to go and click on the planning tab and the default view takes us to what's called the Gantt chart view and uh, to create the Gantt chart we're going to click on the create plan uh, button and what the create plan does is it creates a plan by turning off randomness and executing essentially one run of the simulation so we're generating a deterministic sample path by uh, turning off all of the randomness so the Gantt chart shows by order, we can see the orders over here uh, on the left side, the individual activities and the resources uh, required. So you can see that we can scroll around uh, through the Gantt chart view. We can also hold down the control key and change the time scale. So let me do that and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how to interpret the, uh, the, uh, the Gantt chart. So we have the scale here, and you can see order one whip here at the top. In fact, you can see that the first three whip orders uh, arrived at time zero. And so what the shape here tells me, and if I use the mouse hover, it tells me that the start time for the resource uh, shape started at uh, 9.24 at 7 a.m. So that was the initial time of the simulation start. So the whip order arrived, and we completed processing on the shape station. So because this is deterministic, it sampled from that triangular distribution, but returned the mean value. And then we applied the fraction remaining from the whip table. And the re this is the processing time that resulted. Here uh, at time 10 a.m., uh, we seized the operator so that we could do the teardown. We can then also see that the uh, whip order one moved to the finish station here Tuesday. Uh, looks like it is around uh, 7 a.m. And so if we click on the plus and expand, we can see that the whip order one was constrained waiting for the finish. Uh, operation. And it was waiting because we can see whip order 3 uh, grabbed the, the finish station when it arrived. And then whip order 4 sees the finish station after whip order uh, 3 uh, had it. And then whip order 2 uh, after that. And finally it was available for whip order 1. And so the Gantt chart essentially shows um, by, again, by uh, order the operations and the resources and the constraining resources that the jobs were waiting for. Note also that the Gantt view on the ribbon uh, has various options for uh, zooming. So for example I can zoom uh, to a week, uh, I can zoom to a month uh, automatically uh, from within uh, that ribbon. So the second component we'll look at is the resource plan. So if I select the resource plan view, you can see that the Gantt chart changes from uh, by entity or by order in this case to by resource. And so let me zoom a little bit out so we can see this. Uh, and again, you can scroll around and you also have the same uh, zoom capability as in the previous um, uh, entity workflow. But what this view shows is the individual entities that are being processed by resource. And so we can see that the cut station, let me zoom it just a little bit bigger, uh, the cut station started with order 001, uh, then started with order 0010, order 0005, uh, and so on. And if you do a mouse hover, it, uh, as before, gives you the details of the operation. We can also click on the expansion or the plus sign here and it gives us information about the resource state. So we can see that the machine was processing 
uh, here and here. The machine was off shift, so this is the uh, evening after uh, after four o'clock on Monday. Um, we can also see the constrained entities, and we can see that while the uh, cut station was processing order 0001, order 0010, 0005, and 0002 were all waiting for uh, that resource. So the two Gantt charts, the uh, resource plan and the entity workflow, provide similar information. Uh, the resource plan provides that information by resource, and the entity workflow uh, chart provides the information by entity, in our case, orders. The next view that we're interested in is the log view. And so the log view provides three different um, logs of resource usage. The resource usage log shows chronologically the uh, usage of the individual resources. And so I can see the shape uh, station was used from 7 a.m. Uh, to 1024 a.m. The weld station was used uh, from 7 a.m. to uh, 914.58. And we can also see the corresponding entity, uh, the owner of that uh, resource. If I click on the expansion, I can see details about this usage. So workstation was processing from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. And so this was the uh, work remaining from the work in process and then was in teardown from 10 a.m. to 1024 a.m. The resource state log uh, provides again chronologically the individual resource state. So uh, resource shape uh, was in uh, three hours was in the state processing. If I jump down here to, to, to the next usage for four tenths of an hour, it was in the state teardown. So I can look by workstation or by resource if I want to jump down, or I can look chronologically uh, sequentially down the list. And finally, the constraint log shows uh, chronologically by weight start time. Uh, which resources the entities were, were waiting for or constrained. So in other words, WIP 004 uh, was located at the input buffer of the finish station, and it was waiting to access the finish station. And that started on its arrival at 7 a.m. and continued until 8.35. Similarly, uh, order 0010 was at the input buffer of the cut station uh, waiting for that uh, resource. One interesting uh, entry here I'll highlight is WIP 002 is at the weld station and it's currently in the processing state and is waiting for the operator. So what's happening here is it was finishing the operation at the weld station and now waiting for the operator to perform the teardown step. So clearly the information shown in the logs and in the Gantt charts is, is related. So for example, if I focus on this um, entry here where WIP02 is at the weld station and processing and is waiting for the operator to, uh, for the teardown, I can go to the resource plan and let me zoom in here a little bit. This is the entry we're interested in. So the uh, WIP02 is, uh, is at the weld station and if I open the operator, I can see that uh, the constraint uh, happens right here. Similarly, if I go to the entity workflow view, I can see that same information here on order WIP02. Zoom in a bit so we can actually see it. And here's the operator constraint that's shown in the log. So for now, we'll skip talking about the table view, but we'll come back to talk about that uh, when we get to the risk analysis. The facility model provides uh, a view of the animation, which can be useful because of the feature that allows you to jump to a particular point in time. So for example, I can go to the resource plan. Let's zoom out a little bit here and go over, let's say here, to order 0002. And if I right click, I have the option to run to here. So when I click on that, it runs the simulation or creates the plan to that point and then shows the animation view. The results uh, we're going to talk just a little bit about here and then again we'll come back and talk more about the results view when we get to the risk analysis. But one of the interesting uh, aspects of, is the report uh, option. And so um, we can click on the reports and generate, based on the plan, a, a resource dispatch list. 
So for example, I can click on the cut station and it and click submit and it will generate a work release plan. So for the cut station, we see order 0001 starts at 7 uh, and ends at noon. And so this is the um, um, when it goes off shift, order 0010 then picks up at uh, 12 and goes to, uh, to 312. And so there's a one hour, uh, I'm sorry, the one hour here is between 11 and 12. So it, uh, one hour off shift for lunch. And so then it picks back up at 12 and goes to 312 uh, and so on. I can also click on the show detail tab and for each job it will show uh, for the station uh, the proportion of time spent in setup, processing, teardown, uh, and off shift. So for example if I go to the finish operation uh, I can see uh, one of our whip orders. So this is whip order 3 and so there's no setup time. And so what we've seen in this video is how we can use Simeo RPS to create a plan, which is essentially a deterministic run of the simulation, creating a deterministic sample path, and then use the uh, different views the, to see the uh, how the system progresses. So we can see the entity workflow and view the operations by entity. We can look at the resource plan and see that same information um, organized by resource. We can look at the logs and see the detailed information. We can look at the results uh, and see the dispatch list and, and, and so on. And so the plan gives us one view of one potential sample path. In other words, one sequence of events that could happen. Of course, we all know that randomness does come into play. And that's what we will cover in the next video where we go through the analyze risk option and some of the features that that provides.